Hi, I'm Randy from UXStars.com. Today I'm going to talk with you about an issue where companies don't do a good enough job hiding their internal divisions from external users, right? We all know that inside companies, there are all kinds of divisions and groups and different teams that make different applications, right? But external users really don't care, nor should they have to care, right? So for an example, for quite a while, Walmart used to have a Walmart app and a grocery app. So the grocery app had been created so that people could go and order their groceries and pick them up at the store. And then that app also would allow sometimes those groceries to be delivered to your doorstep. All right. The Walmart app was for everything else. So on your phone, if you had to go and review your purchase history, you might look for Walmart and guess what? you would have two apps come up and you'd be like, was this like a grocery purchase or was this a walmart.com purchase? Um, it was a bit confusing and I always sort of thought of odd that there were two different apps. Not only that, but that the grocery app didn't even say Walmart. It sort of assumed your familiarity with the logo. Beside the point, they have moved on to something better. I open up the grocery app recently and I see that they have merged the two apps. Perhaps they saw some of my prior videos about Walmart. Probably not, but I'd like to think so. So they have brought these two sides together into a Walmart app. Makes perfect sense. They are taking a step in the right direction here. So where would you have these things fall within the Jacob Nielsen 10 usability heuristics? It's a little tricky because they don't seem to quite line up perfectly. Um, but I think that number two and six would um, match between the system and the real world, right? That makes sense because the users who are in the real world, they don't care about what system of divisions and departments that you have represented in your software, right? So you have to think about it, how the users see their real world. All right, recognition rather than recall come into play because sometimes I couldn't remember which app I was supposed to go into and I'd have to go into the app and be like, oh, wait, no, I have to go into that app. It should have just been, oh, I recognize what this app does and I, it's going to do what I need it to do. So they did bring the two apps together, but I think I see a case here where they can actually take it a step further and making it easier for customers to use. All right. So the scenario that I had was that I needed to return a product that I had walked into the store for uh, physically. This is the oldest store use case job to do in, you know, in the books to physically go into a store um, and want to, you know, interact and either buy or return something you got there. Right. So when I open up the Walmart app these days, it gives me two options. Remember, what I'm trying to do here is get my e-receipt for something that I had bought in the store, right? So the first option is, would you like to shop pickup and delivery? No, not really. I'm not trying to shop at all. Would I like to shop at walmart.com? No, I'm certainly wanting to go to a physical store. So I've got two options. I got to pick one, I figure. So let's go with the first one, right? Because that's like sort of a physical location sort of thing. All right, so I didn't see anything about order history at first, um, but I did notice a hamburger menu up in the upper left-hand corner, right? I clicked on that and I'm like, yes, purchase history, score. Um, but guess what? It's only gonna show me the pickup and delivery purchase history because of the way that I went through the app. What? Remember, the purchase that I made was on June 29th. It's hidden. Now, some of the things I, I removed here because the details aren't relevant to other purchases, but you can know that the 29th should fall between the 25th and July 2nd, last time I looked at it. So, great. So this is more like my pickup and delivery purchase history, and it does not consider me going physically into a store as part of that. Okay, what now? Well, the other option was walmart.com. Um, you know, now that I mention it in this tidy little thing, it says in-store tools and services. That's, you know, I didn't even notice that till I was presenting it right now. Um, but so I'm like, okay, hey, shop walmart.com. Fine. i um, not really trying to shop. I'm just trying to get my receipt. So let's take a look. All right. Well, 
I'm a bit more familiar with the interface on this, and I remember that I bought things with Walmart Pay, all right? I'll explain that in a little bit. So I went to the services, Walmart Pay, and it brought this up. Now, Walmart Pay is actually something I could do a whole other video on, something that I'm incredibly impressed with. The idea is that you hold out your phone, it scans a QR code on the cash register display, and then boom, you paid for it, your receipt is stored electronically, right? Awesome user experience with that. But the point is, I'm trying to return a product that I physically bought in a store. And when I go to Walmart Pay, I'm not seeing anything that says order history, or purchase history, or anything along those lines. So what am I to do? Well, I figure I see this card at the bottom of the app here, um, and that I should be able to swipe that up so that I can see more information about the, you know, Walmart Pay settings, purchase history, whatever. I keep trying to swipe up this card here, nothing happens. Um, then I try tapping on it, and sure enough, that takes me to the settings page. So this is a little bit off track of my main focus here, but sometimes it is unclear what gestures that a user is supposed to use. If I see something at the bottom of an app and part of it is exposed, I would want to sort of pull it up. No, this was, you gotta tap it. <sighs> Whatever. My point there is gestures are not always as obvious to users as you think they are. So anyway, I tapped on that little section and of course it took me to walmart pay settings awesome view e-receipts count me in all right i click on that june 29th the moment we've been waiting for i can see the things i went into a store for and bought with walmart pay great so i still i got to the um cashier at the customer service um after that and i was like okay, how do I get my receipt for this? And um, yeah, that's this little icon up here. You know, if somebody is going to be, you know, in the previous order, you would think that you'd want the receipt to be a little bit more prominent on the screen. Um, but I know it for the future, but that is something that I will have to recall um, as far as remembering that's where I click. Um, now there is another mention, uh, another option here. Um, to start a return and you can actually start a return process before you even get to a store But what I was looking for was a receipt so I could just show the cashier um, The the barcode and they could go ahead and pursue that Now I did notice that there is a different path where I could have gotten to the same order as well If I had originally chosen the walmart.com Which of course I didn't choose because I didn't feel like I went to walmart.com and bought something if I had chosen that second option, and then I had gone into Mr. Hamburger menu, there was purchase history there. And that also showed me the in-store purchase, right? So, you know, thinking in terms of the users, if they're physically going into a store, they're not going to feel like they bought something from your .com website. It's just not the way we think, right? So in summary, users just want to return something they bought from you. They don't care if this was your grocery department, if this was your walmart.com division or whatever, right? Um, you could give them filters to say, hey, here's your grocery type things, here's your in-store things and whatever, but you will have to be very careful if you are going to separate that out. Otherwise, they might end up filtering the list and not finding what they wanted, right? So my point here is, is that Yes, you're going to have different teams and departments and divisions inside your company, right? Everybody wants to get the things done and do the best and whatever. But on the outside, uh, you have to try to make that a unified brand experience, right? That's the whole point. You want your brand to, you know, say, hey, we've got, you know, a good customer experience, good, you know, usability, all that. And so you want that to be a unified whole. So you want to go and say, are we giving a single unified outside perspective of our company? Or are we saying, go here for this, go here for this, go here for this. No, that's not us. That's the other part, right? All right. Well, I hope that inspired you to think a bit about how your company may be presenting itself. And until next time, see ya.